role of the Messiah that they knew. It was going to be King David and the Maccabeans all rolled into one at last. But nothing happened. Jesus didn't achieve. Unexpected underachievement. For those of you who, like me, are fans of Project Runway, every week Heidi Klum says, Welcome to the runway, where, as you know, in the world of fashion, one day you're in, and the next day you're out. So it was in Jesus' time. Just as Jesus rejected the temptations of worldly power, influence, and expectations at the beginning of his ministry, so he rejects the expectations of the people here at its end. Jesus' Holy Week journey quickly deteriorates. Jesus' unexpected underachievement led to the derision of the people and ultimately to his crucifixion. That is what human beings do. When others disappoint us, we find ways to crucify them, don't we? Many times these people whom we have elevated to godlike positions due to their wealth and their influence or athletic ability or their beauty or their ability to entertain us with the movies that they make, fail to live up to our expectations of them. We actually delight in their implosions. <coughs> Recently, Tiger Woods has been the object of scorn and derision from the public. Right here at home, don't some of us delight in the scandals surrounding Sheldon Kilpack and Kevin Garn? Dr. Phil says that for every rat you see, there are 50 that you don't. In Kevin Garn's case, the rats are. From 30 years of personal empire building are coming out of the woodpile in droves, and don't we love it. Unexpected underachievement. Jesus just didn't do what the Jews were expecting him to do, and they turned on him. His kingdom wasn't the kind in which they were interested. And I suspect it really isn't the kind of kingdom that we're that interested in either. Because it's almost impossible to tear our expectations from the prizes which do have value to us. <coughs> prizes like power and possessions and social status and money or achievement just to name a few. All of those idols we create so that we can worship them. Even doing good or being frugal, these two can become our idols, our ways of comparing ourselves with each other and assuring ourselves that we really are doing a little better than other people. We think that we are worthy of a procession or of worship. What Jesus did do that no one realized that he was doing was to fulfill all of the prophetic elements of all of those ancient Jewish festivals. Jesus was the Passover lamb, the mean by, means by which we escape the angel of death and pass through the waters of chaos to the eternal promised land on the other side. Jesus was the first fruit, the earliest grain to rise, the down payment on restoration of relationship, and the one through whom all of us will rise. Jesus released the Holy Spirit on Pentecost, which makes his followers the priesthood of all believers. We are the first harvest. We ourselves, the down payment on the second harvest, on the kingdom of God that has begun here and now and is yet to come. And Jesus is the royalty, the king, the palms that are woven into the tabernacles of the dwelling places where God will one day live directly in the presence of his people. Jesus is the law, and Jesus fulfills the law. Jesus gives us the completed law. Jesus is prophet, priest, and king. But there is one more thing 
this silly little festival, this silly little ceremony gives to us. You see, Jesus' Holy Week began in triumph and ended at the cross. It descended into tragedy that became his triumph and ultimately our triumph as well. Our own personal journey of surrender, or our own death on the cross, to paraphrase St. Paul, begins in the same way. Our human pride and triumph. I can manage my own world. I am pretty great. Those are our own expectations. But if we are honest with ourselves, it doesn't take very long for us to self-destruct. We may not be rich and famous like Tiger Woods or even Kevin Garn, and, we, and our fall from favor, for most of us, is not so public. But we are just as guilty of causing pain to others around us as they are. If we are honest with ourselves, we will acknowledge that we, too, are unexpected underachievers. It's unexpected because we are created in the image of God, and as such, are to image God's love in our relations with one another. Underachievers, because we don't behave that way. We are spiritually learning disabled. We cannot help ourselves to be any different, even if we try really, 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 really hard. We require specialized intervention in the person of Jesus Christ. So when we realize we cannot make ourselves into good people, then our personal Holy Week tumbles downhill, coming smack up against the cross, and there we find our rest, our success, and our completion. In like manner, every single Sunday, we should begin with remembering our Palm Sunday state of being and reenact our Holy Week journey to surrender at the cross as our only hope of restoration and completion. From being unexpected, underachieving, spiritually learning disabled, we become the overachieving heirs to the kingdom of God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let's have a meaningful Palm Sunday and a meaningful Holy Week. In the Catholic Church, they take home the palms and they keep them somewhere in the house, either woven into one of the crosses on the wall or some picture that's a holy picture, and they keep them through the whole year, and then they are burned on Ash Wednesday. I don't know if you care to do that, but I think it's an interesting, an interesting way to keep Holy Week with us throughout the entire year. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for coming. We thank you for your Holy Week sacrifice. We thank you for bringing us into reconciliation with our Lord. We bring you now our gifts, our material gifts, that we offer up to you for your use in your kingdom. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.